In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, this evening, we celebrate the uh, solemnity of all the saints. Uh, early on in the church, when somebody really uh, exemplified the life of Christ, who was really um, drew people into the church and so forth, uh, or more martyred and so forth, um, there was usually a day at the beginning to kind of commemorate them, to commemorate not only uh, their life, their example, to try to emulate that example. Uh, and so after a period of time, with so many people uh, really doing a wonderful job of uh, Christian discipleship, they decided to have one day where they would celebrate all those who, um, who have gone before who uh, really allowed Jesus to live his life through them. Um, and so in many ways we're reminded that the saints uh, give us a goal, something to strive for, uh, remind us about what's truly important in life to help us to give us a priority to our lives, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind the ways that we have failed uh, to give our lives over to the Lord. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of, of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth to you people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty and living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <laughs> reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees, until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. 
After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne, before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who sits on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders of the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the great time of the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord are the earth and its fullness, the world and all those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean who desires not what is in vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from the God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God, yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they, they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. years after I was ordained, I um, went to hear, I would go to hear confessions at the Sisters of St. Joseph about once a month. And um, every time I would go to hear confessions, a lot of them struggled with scrupulosity. Um, I would have a conversation with uh, just about any of them that would go something like this. Um, Father, I had this thought that um, you know, that I didn't want to have, and it, you know, I know it's sin, and I'm a bad person, and so forth. And I would say, well, sister, that's not, it's not really a sin. I mean, it's, it's just a thought. It's only if you, if you give in to the thought. And, and then the sister would say, well, okay, so if I, if I think it's not that bad, then I, I won't sin by having this thought anymore. I would say, no, I mean, it's, it's not a sin. It's just a thought. I mean, it's, it's what you do with the thought that will make it a sin or not, you know. And, um, and they would say, okay, so if I, if I think it's not a sin, then I won't have this thought and I won't sin anymore. No, sister, it's not a sin. Just, just don't, you know, don't put any emphasis on it. Just recognize the temptation, sort of uh, passing by, you know. And um, oh, well, sister, now, I could read minds at times whenever I would have this conversation. In fact, I kind of learned to memorize the whole book of Romans simply from that um, frustrating discussion because every time I would try to um, reinforce the idea that we are uh, spirit and flesh and the flesh is never going to go away in this life you just need to not pay attention to it or let it rule your life but regardless um, at times I could read minds and what they would be thinking at that time what they would want me to say is you had what thought Oh my gosh, I don't even know if you can be forgiven. What kind of person has that thought? Um, I think it might be hopeless. I might have to appeal to Rome. I don't even know if you can go to heaven anymore. Now that's what they wanted me to say, but um, regardless, I would always try to steer them back to uh, the book of Romans. Um, but the sisters, for the most part, were completely ignorant they were completely oblivious. They were just totally in the dark. But the one who was really learning was the one sitting across the chair table from them. The real student, the real one who was gaining spiritual insight every time I went, was the one giving them absolution. The one who was learning more about the spiritual life, learning how to navigate his spiritual life, was the one who was giving them spiritual counsel. Because every single one of them had a look of joy on their face. Every single one of them uh, was happy. They didn't have anything that you normally connect with happiness. Um, you know, and so at times I would have to, you know, simply say to them, Sister, if you don't smile at Sister Mary the next time and she sees teeth, I think it might be uh, too late for you. No, but I, I wouldn't say that. But I would always learn a great deal more from them than they would ever learn from me. And in fact, one of them that I'm still friends with, um, I would go in and hear the confessions, and I would always look forward to spending a little bit more time talking with her um, because she was the old, always the one that talking to her felt like sort of like I was talking to Christ himself, that uh, in my own life, in my own spiritual journey, um, that she would always kind of uh, give me insight into things. In fact, she would go out and feed squirrels and chipmunks and uh, a cat, and one of the other sisters would get upset with her because she didn't want her feeding the animals, but she had names for them all, and she would go out. She was like a little St. Francis, but again, all of them were totally oblivious about how holy they were, how much they uh, exude the light of Christ, uh, how much God's light uh, really shone through them. They were oblivious 
uh, of how holy and Christ-like they really were. Now today we celebrate All Saints Day. Whenever we think about All Saints Day, the one little problem with it is that uh, we think of somebody who uh, was so holy, so unselfish, so Christ-like, that we're really kind of detached from them. I mean, they were martyrs, or they were giving all their time to the poor, or they were doing this or doing that. Um, and we really don't have anything uh, in connection with them. Uh, but the reality is, if you went back in time, I would guarantee that if you talked to any of them and let them know uh, what an effect they may have had on your life, that all of them would probably would guarantee be totally stunned that they would be considered a saint. Uh, because all of them probably struggled in their own way. It's not struggling, overcoming every struggle that makes one a saint. It's persevering in the struggle. It's learning to rely uh, upon the Lord, not on yourself. It's learning to uh, trust in Him uh, for guidance, for strength, uh, for overcoming uh, oneself. Now, in the um, second reading from the letter of John, John gives us an important insight about our own spiritual journeys. He says, Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us. We may be called children of God, yet so we are. The reason the world does not know it is it did not know Him. We are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. Basically, everyone who has this hope makes himself pure as he is pure. So what John is telling them, and these are probably all uh, rather new converts, it, is that uh, they are God's children. They are holy. They are very beloved by God. God uses them in wonderful ways. Uh, I'd be willing to bet that all of them were oblivious to it, but they probably thought I have to become really holy, I have to do all these wonderful things, I have to commit three hours a day to prayer, and then I can be God's child. I can go out and, and, and kind of exude his light. But he's telling them that right now, they are God's child. Right now, God loves them immensely. Right now, in all their struggles, and all their foibles, with all their sins, God loves them immensely. They need to realize that. They need to internalize that. They need to accept that. And as they accept that, uh, they will be uh, more fitting, uh, be able to be more fitting children of God. Or they will be able to, as he says at the end, um, because they have this hope, uh, they will be able to become, in that sense, uh, pure. In the Gospel, we hear the familiar account of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew's Gospel, it's kind of important the way it's set up, because Jesus goes up the mountain, uh, which is very reminiscent of Moses, and he sits down. So he goes up the mountain, he sits down, and shows that he's teaching. Uh, then he gives us the Beatitudes, which are kind of like very much similar, uh, in a reverse kind of a way, uh, to, to the Ten Commandments. Instead of um, don't or avoid doing all these things, the Beatitudes are more focused on uh, doing these things or incorporating these virtues into their lives. Uh, and so as he goes on to talk about each one of them, really the kernel of the uh, Sermon on the Mount uh, is the first one. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now poor in spirit doesn't necessarily mean being downtrodden or sad, although it may, being poor in spirit means when all the illusions I have uh, that make me important are taken away. When all the thing, the illusions I have in life that make, that make me think God is going to approve of me are removed. Uh, when all the illusions of pride or selfishness are kind of seen for what they are, uh, then Jesus tells us, congratulations to you, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. It's in that sense that the Lord calls us not to overcome every flaw. He simply calls us to forget about one important thing, to forget about self. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a Lutheran minister, had a quote on this that 
I read it and I thought it was quite insightful and ended up kind of memorizing it. But what he said was, self-denial is never an act of mortification, a single act of mortification. Self-denial is not um, denying self things that they would enjoy. Self-denial isn't even suicide. Self-denial, all self-denial can say is, he leads the way, keep close to him. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was prepared, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to be judged the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grateful to the Lord for all our many blessings and gifts, we bring our needs before Him. In communion with all the saints, we offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to lead and guide her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For expectant mothers, may God bless them with the love of family and community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. For each of us gathered here, may God help us in our efforts to seek and follow his will in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. For those who have died, may they know the joy of heaven in the presence of all the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. For Francis Vincent, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. And for all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Father, with trust in your love and mercy, we bring these prayers before you. We ask that you answer them according to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Sisters and brothers, for our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. We praise the glory of His name for our good and the of all of your church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with all the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Zion and Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zion and Christ. He therefore, most merciful Father, we may come with prayer and Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which you are, which we offer you firstly, your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For you, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Levis, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the salvation of our servants, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Therefore, be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with his eyes raised to heaven, to you as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty. From the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this faultless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation, be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and timely confidence. And to, to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, able to just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, that command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who do this participation at the altar, Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone, gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. Do also, also your servants to those sinners. Hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen and Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merit, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through him you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
mine inside you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Let us pray. As we adore you, O oh God, who alone are holy, wonderful, and all those saints, we implore your grace, so that coming to perfect holiness and the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly home, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may all my God bless you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Have a good week, everyone.